Welcome to the last session of uh, data analysis and visualization module. So uh, we're going to look at the, uh, some materials which we work and specifically <coughs> with some uh, guidance for your uh, individual coursework too. So uh, I'm going to cover a uh, little bit for the missingness, PCA, uh, NMF, uh, clustering, and uh, if you have any question, just interrupt me and uh, I will explain <coughs> the details that you're requesting. So. If you, if you recall, we <coughs> mentioned that as part of pre-processing a step, we need to address the missingness of a data set. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something that uh, uh, in most uh, cases that we are collecting data, uh, because of the technical uh, failure in collecting data, we are facing with missingness in our data set. So in that case, we need to find a way to uh, address the uh, missing data. So specifically for some features, we could have some missingness. If you recall, we had, for instance, uh, a number of samples, uh, two samples with a number of features. And for some of the features, as you can see here, we have uh, uh, no data, uh, an A, illustrated by an A, or in a uh, continuous, actually, signal, you can see from this plot that uh, some part of this signal actually uh, excluded. So these are missingness that uh, in data analytics and uh, all the almost uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, techniques that we are doing. So we may face with uh, this type of uh, uh, difficulties. So and it could be a part of pre-processing step which we expecting to sure expecting to do during. Uh, our analysis. So, this is an example that, uh, for instance, for a specific data set with a number of features, a number of samples, just one of the features uh, actually uh, failed when perhaps uh, collecting data for uh, creating this data set, or because of any reasons, we missed one data for one specific feature. So in that case, the question is, OK, what, how can we uh, address this missingness? So because this is uh, linked to one specific sample and also one feature, the question is, can we remove these samples because of just one missing? So, and the answer of this uh, question is, <clears throat> and as I already mentioned, uh, collecting data is very expensive process. Sometimes providing the data, the molecular data of these samples uh, uh, was including actually loads of uh, cost uh, and energy for uh, providing this data. So we cannot easily remove uh, the data including uh, missingness. Not to mention that it depends on the situation. So, and uh, uh, <clears throat> depending on the data set, this actually could be, uh, and the number of, um, uh, the fraction of missing, this could be a little bit uh, uh, challenging uh, addressing missingness. So, uh, if you recall, we had uh, a classifier here, uh, one versus all support vector machine classifier. 
So, and we had 17 features of 106 samples, including missingness. The first thing that we realized that if you fit this data set into this classifier, you will get an error. So many techniques, many uh, methods in uh, they cannot actually handle the missingness. Or if any technique actually handled the missingness, they added some extra library or functions into the, that specific function uh, method which allows uh, it uh, to be uh, to address the missingness. Okay. So that's why we have to add, uh, analyze the missingness and uh, uh, finding the fraction of missing and see if, if we could uh, address this missingness, okay? So this was uh, just an example of uh, the data set that I mentioned for this number of samples originated all this data from uh, this machine and handling the da missing data was a part of this uh, process, okay? So this is uh, one of the slides that I think a couple of times I explained, but um, which is really important in terms of uh, the type of uh, missingness. As you can see, we have, uh, first of all, we mentioned that failure in uh, responding to a question or a device that we collect in data or in data entry a procedure, failure in one of these cases actually uh, creating the missingness. And uh, as you can see from uh, these three types of missingness, we have missing at random, missing completely at random, and missing not at random. So for the case that we have missing at random, we were able to estimate the missingness by using, by when we have the data set with this type of missingness. In this case, the probability that a value is missing depends only on observed values. It means we have, uh, for instance, let's say this data set that I show you here. So we're saying that this feature has all the values, but for this sample, okay? So missing at random for this case, because it's a missing at random for this data set, it says that we can estimate the values of this feature by some function by applying some function on the rest of the observation for this specific feature and calculate the, uh, an estimation of this missing. The simplest case scenario is just adding up all of this and divided by the number of samples. An average could be a kind of uh, estimation, okay? For this specific uh, feature. Right, so here we have missing at random and uh, we are allowed to do this. And specifically when the fraction of missing is rather low, I mean, again, low is a fuzzy word, it's not very accurate, but depending on the data set. However, it's been based on, for instance, the data set that we had for about less than 7%, 10% would be rather a uh, low fraction of missing. So, and specifically, if you recall, we had three missing genes in, in the data set that you work for the individual course book one. So in that case, we are allowed to do uh, the Im imputation or estimation by this assumption that missing at random for the data set, uh, which I provided already. So, but if you face with any these two type of missingness, when we have missing completely at random or missing not random, so it's not possible to estimate or impute or anything for handling the uh, missingness, okay? 
So the missing nets cannot be predicted from any other variable. Okay, so what we can do with missingness in these two cases? Huh? We can just stop doing analysis or removing the samples that include the uh, uh, missing features or missing data. Okay, so there is no any uh, un, uh, uh, except you could actually develop a new technique in the future for handling uh, the missingness for uh, proper handling of uh, missingness for uh, this type of these two type of uh, uh, missingness. So it's and not to mention that it's still a mathematician actually working on these two groups of data, it's, it's not very straightforward, it's rather complicated to differentiate the type of missing, in which situation we can say missing at random or completely at random, a little bit uh, challenging, even actually in terms of the definition between mathematicians, but anyway, we are not going to go to the detail. So again, what I'm saying here, if it's, <coughs> Data set missingness is missing at random. We could impute, we could estimate the missingness. While we know that the fraction of missing is low, because if the fraction of missing is going to be high, so in that case, we have to be careful. And if we do the uh, uh, mis uh, addressing missingness, we have to always check the final result and come back to uh, from the, let's say we are going to do clustering or classification. And the fraction of missing is 25%, okay? So we have to be careful about this type of imputation. We are allowed to do this because we know that the missingness is based on missing at random, is a little bit higher, is risky, we cannot certainly say that this is a good solution, but we don't have any other options. So we have to finish to do our final analysis and then come back and see how this affects the uh, uh, clustering result by trying different imputation or different estimation techniques and comparing all of these results. And Again, for these two, missing completely at random, missing not random, if you recognize a data set with this type of missingness, it means you're not able to predict uh, the missingness by using other uh, variables or uh, features values. And in that case, we have to just exclude the sample from our data. Okay, so and as you can see, all of this k nearest neighbor, expectation maximization, mean, uh, least square, uh, uh, three algorithms, singular value decomposition, factor analysis, all of this are type of imputation method. And I've been asked loads of questions that you can see from this table. Can we use k nearest neighbor? No, because it's a for instance, this is imputation. I mean, I'm saying that we are going to not to use uh, any of these type of imputation. Okay. Right. Any question for this part?